Dr. Peter Lilbach is president of the Providence Forum and is also a best-selling author and professor of historical theology, as well as of church history. Peter, thanks for joining us. It's great to have you Thank here. Thank you, Frank. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Always good to have you with us. We are celebrating the 500th anniversary of the Protestant Reformation, and much will be said and has been written about it. If someone were to ask you, Dr. Lilbach, give me your thumbnail sketch of what's the heart of the Reformation? What was the essence of what happened 500 years ago? Well, the word Reformation has the idea of being reshaped to an original standard. We have Reformations going on in many spheres of life. And so this was the time when the church was required by Luther's courage and those that followed him mm -hmm. to be measured once again by sola scriptura. Mm. The scriptures alone is the standard for the church's faith and practice. So in a simple statement, the Reformation is about being faithful to the Bible once again in the history of the church's life. Let's talk about the political implications because uh, when you walk through the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol, one of the eight great portraits hanging in the rotunda is of the pilgrims landing at Plymouth Rock and and there's a, an open Bible in that scene, and it's the Bible with Calvin's commentary on the, on the sidelines or on the margins. What uh, impact did the Protestant Reformation have on what we sometimes refer to as the American experiment? Well, the silent witness of the impact is evident every time we see a president taking the oath of office. Mm -hmm. How did that Bible get there? Why does he put his hand on it and take an oath? because that was the standard of truth. It was the standard of authority. It was a way of saying that I am taking a vow in the presence of God because this is God's word and I will be held accountable for my word based upon the teaching of that scriptures. So the Bible created, if you will, the standards of morality as well as the religion that shaped the ideas of freedom. The idea of uh, the Bible being important for American culture is seen in the fact that Washington at the end of the revolution said, we'll never be a happy nation unless we imitate the divine author of our blessed religion. Mm -hmm. In other words, he was saying we need to know the Bible and who Christ is if we're going to have a successful nation. It's planted there right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. One of the hallmarks of the pre-Reformation church, at least for individual Christians, was kind of a compartmentalization of life where you lived a secular life six days a week and on Sunday you sort of did all your religious things together. How did the Reformation change that? Well, one of the principles of the Reformation, especially in the Reformed and Calvinistic tradition, uh, emphasized that the Ten Commandments are really the heart of our duties to God and to our neighbor. And it's fascinating that the Fourth Commandment says, six days you shall work and then you shall keep the Sabbath. In other words, the entire week is an expression of worship. It's in the first table of the law on how we love and worship God. Now there's special worship, what we do on Sundays, mm -hmm. but there's daily worship that is just as much part of right. what God would have for us. And of course that then creates the Protestant work ethic. Six days are worshiping God, giving God your best for His glory. And then out of the fruits of that we have time to stop and worship God and share out of the fruits of what we've accumulated to advance His kingdom. Right. Work and worship go hand in hand in the Reformed tradition, and that comes right out of the Reformation. Martin Luther was exorcised about some very specific things. I mean, he nailed a list of 95 things on the door of the church at Wittenberg. What were some of the specific concerns that Luther had? Well, the specific issue was the problem of indulgences, and it's a complicated story, but in a simple uh, narrative we can say this that over time the practice of penance, not found in the Bible, rather the idea that the priest is going to tell you what to do to make up for your sins, mm -hmm. instead of repentance turning from your sin and then asking God to forgive you, the church was going to tell you what you do and then you could then find restoration, satisfaction. Right. Now sometimes what you're asked to do is utterly impossible and difficult. And so they gave you an indulgence. They said, well, let's help you with this. And they said, well, how about if you pay a fine instead of your doing 100 Hail Marys after 20 miles of traveling to the shrine? And so that began the process. And then because it was lucrative and practical, it was applied to many other things, like what about the soul in purgatory? Can we buy indulgences for the dead? Will it help me with future sins? What if I'm going to do something wrong? If I buy an indulgence, will it cover that? Yeah, that will cover that too. 
I think the bottom line is, is that those kind of human inventions were going on. And that's where Luther unwittingly, when he nailed the 95 Theses to the Wittenberg church door, didn't know he was starting a reformation. He didn't know he was going to break from the Catholic church. He saw himself as a faithful Roman Catholic right. priest trying to just reform the church on this specific area yeah. and some other areas he was concerned about. And lo and behold, when they condemned him as a heretic, he said, all I've done is teach the Bible. If this is uh, sin enough to be condemned, then whoever wrote these is an antichrist because he's standing against the Bible. And that was the epiphany for Luther when he realized, I'm launching a new return to the Bible with a church that doesn't want to follow the Scriptures. And he was willing to die for that faith. And that's why 500 years later, we're still talking about what they did. Because what they did, we continue to need to do. It changed the world then. And when the Reformation principles are taken seriously, they change our lives. Mm -hmm. And they change our world. And we need a new Reformation because the world is constantly moving away from God and His Word. And we need to say, come back to the truth of Scriptures because here there's the place to stand and build your life. Peter, thanks for being with us. We're delighted to have you here. It's a great honor to be with you again, Frank. God's continued blessings on your extraordinary ministry. Thank you.